All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you so much for joining me once again. I'm out on an overnight once again in Columbus, Ohio today. And the topic of today's discussion is going to be the lights section on the overhead panel. So as always, picking up where we left off last time, we're talking about this section here, the, the external light panel, like I said. And you know, I, I know you're probably thinking to yourself right now, I mean, how, how exciting could a discussion on airplane lights be? But it, um, as always, you know, I'm going to start with just some kind of high level, you know, type of things to tell you about, you know, the lights themselves. And we'll kind of move on and talk about the switches specifically, you know, how they work, when they're used, what they do. And then there's just a, you know, some random data points I could think to talk to, to you about and, and share with you with regards to the lights there. So hopefully we'll make this a little more exciting or kind of uh, teach you some things you, you might not have guessed or you, maybe you didn't already know. And then we'll wrap it up, of course, with the Q&A section like always. And uh, that'll be it for today. So just to start off the discussion, I'm going to bring up a uh, just a, a picture of, of the Airbus here. So you can kind of you know just take a look at this while I'm talking through these, the, the first portion of the um, the chat here. So, you know, first of all, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, why do we have these lights there in the first place? And of course, some of these reasons are, are very obvious. And, you know, most people without any airplane knowledge would, of course, like guess these types of things. But, you know, there's a few other reasons that's interesting about aircraft lights that you might not have guessed. And, you know, the, the, the first reason we have these lights is, of course, for recognition. So, of course, for other airplanes to see us while we're, we're flying around and, you know, reduce the risk of collisions, you know, during nighttime operations. And even during the day, you know, the lights are helpful. Uh, also, we have uh, lights for path illumination, both on the ground and while we're on approach. So, of course, you know, we're taxiing around the airports. We need to see where we're going. And even when we're, we're flying an approach, we need to have, you know, the runway become, <clears throat> excuse me, illuminated at some point. So we kind of know, you know, when to flare and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, two of the other reasons, though, that I want to tell you about that, like I said, might not be, you know, the first couple things that you guessed. Uh, we have lights for ice recognition. So uh, there's some lights that we can actually turn on and illuminate, you know, the, the forward section of the wings and the engine cowls themselves just to see if ice is accumulating out there. Uh, and the last reason I, I think is, you know, kind of the, an interesting one, uh, and that is uh, these lights actually, you know, when used in a certain manner, uh, actually serve as signals to ground personnel or other airplanes that are operating around us. So, you know, so we'll, we'll kind of come back and talk about each one of those things uh, as we step through each one of the switches. But I just wanted to start out by telling you, you know, like I said, kind of the high level stuff there. So. Uh, let's get, you know, some orientation, first of all, and kind of talk about, you know, which one is which. And I've got a graphic just right out of the Airbus, uh, the FCOM here. So uh, as always, you've, you've kind of heard me talk about this stuff before and kind of make fun of, of Airbus uh, a little bit because, you know, they, they sell you a, a multi-million dollar airplane, but, you know, a lot of their manuals are just, you know, kind of uh, basically gray and white. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just think it's kind of funny that... Uh, yeah, when we're talking about uh, lights, uh, it would be nice to have some color uh, coding uh, maybe put on the graphic there. But, uh, you know, hey, yeah, it just is, is what it is. But always, always kind of a funny thing that cracks me up when I go through the manuals there. Uh, so first of all, um, let's let's just go, you know, real, real briefly, you know, through each of the lights. And so you kind of know, like, what I'm talking about when I use these terminologies and whatnot. So, you know, the first one here, uh, the... These, these two guys on the top of the aircraft and the belly of the aircraft, these are the, the rotating beacon or sometimes called the, the anti-collision light. And just a little side note, this, this always kind of, you know, just, uh, you know, caught my attention, you know, the anti-collision light. I mean, like really, you know, all the lights in the outside of the airplane serve the purpose of, you know, anti-collision. So um, for whatever reason, you know, the, the beacon or the rotating red, you know, flashing red light on the outside of the airplane, uh, if you hear that term, anti-collision light that's specifically what's being talked about uh, number two here uh, this these two lights you know kind of on the um, they're situated on the the left side and the right side kind of the forward section of the fuselage and you can kind of see them here illuminating like I said the the forward edge of the wing there and also the engine sections that's our our wing um, uh, as the switch is labeled or the the ice recognition light like I mentioned a moment ago uh, number three here, uh, we have a, uh, a red light on the uh, the left wing here. We have a green light on the uh, the right side of the wing, and then there's a, uh, a white light on the uh, the aft section here. And also, this little graphic here is depicting the logo light or the the light that kind of shines up and illuminates the tail and you know makes the um, the logo of the airplane specifically visible. Um, but you know these. These are sometimes referred to as nav lights or position lights, and the, the purpose these serve is, you know, so that 
somebody looking at this airplane, you know, in a, in a night con nighttime condition, once again, can actually get an idea of like, you know, where this airplane is pointed and, you know, how it's moving in relation to them. You just kind of get used to, you know, seeing these things after a while. And, you know, one of the first things I remember being taught, um, you know, when I was learning to fly is, you know, we had this, uh, this, this phrase that just said, you know, red, right, returning. So if you see a red light on the right side, it means it's returning to you or it's flying towards you. And uh, that's, you know, of course, like, you know, you're, you're potentially on a collision course if you see something like, like this. So, you know, of course, you're going to, you know, correct uh, your flight path or do something about it uh, just to, to make sure you're not getting too close to an aircraft. But like I said, just, just you know, the, the concept there that these lights are positioned the way they are just so we can kind of, um, you know, give, uh, give other aircraft an idea of like how we're pointing and how we're moving in relation to them. Um, and, you know, of course, an interesting... Uh, point about these two is like many things in aviation. I mean, this was the system was really kind of borrowed from ships. There's a lot of like nautical, you know, um, systems that were kind of taken over or norms, let's say, um, you know, when, when aviation really started to, you know, get underway. Um, you know, you, you see the same type of thing on ships where they have, you know, the left and right, you know, lighting that just kind of in the same way allows, you know, boats to, you know, get an idea of what, what other craft are doing around them. So it's a, kind of the same concept there. So that's the nav lights, the position lights. Uh, number six here, uh, this is just showing us these uh, runway turnoff lights in the Airbus. Um, it just kind of, as the name implies, just kind of gives you a little bit like wider illumination. You know, when you're, you're getting ready to turn off the runway and, you know, you, you might be picking up a smaller, you know, paved surface or a much more narrow taxiway. It just kind of gives you some bearing about, you know, just, you know, a little, little bit of extra field of view that, you know, you might need to illuminate to steer your aircraft safely and keep it on the pavement, let's say. So, the runway turnoff lights. Uh, number five here, this is just depicting the, the landing lights. And um, just as the name implies, you know, we use these, you know, not just when we're landing, but we're taking off in other phases of flight too. But, you know, they, these guys are under the wing here. We'll, we'll take a little bit closer look. There's a few things I wanted to mention about that and just tell you about the landing lights that are unique on the Airbus. And then up on the nose, we have uh, two bulbs, uh, one for taxiing and one for takeoff. We'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit about those as we progress along. And uh, number seven here, this just depicts the, the strobe lights. So we have one on each wing and, you know, one on the tail section there. And these are just, you know, those, um, you know, the, the bright white flashing lights, you know, once again, just to make ourselves as visible as possible to, to other airplanes that are flying around us. And um, one little side note here too, that's interesting about the Airbus. If you're having a hard time you know, recognizing a Boeing from an Airbus at night, it's, it's really interesting. The Airbus actually has a double flashing strobe. So the next time you're kind of looking up at the night sky and you're wondering what kind of airplane's flying overhead of, of you, you can just, uh, if you look out for the double strobe hit, uh, that is an Airbus. And like I said, uh, it's um, unique, I guess you'd say. I'm not, I'm not sure what other, um, or how many other aircraft have that double hit like that, but for whatever reason, Airbus chose to uh, design it that way. So just a little bit uh, of extra uh, data there for you. So... Uh, let's come back and I'll bring up the switch panel once again. I, I kind of figured I'd, I'd just try to um, tell you generally, you know, at what phases of flight or during the course of the operation of the airplane, you know, do we use each of these lights? Because it is kind of different and, you know, there is kind of a sequence or there is kind of like a rhyme or a reason to like, you know, why we do, you know, certain things at certain times. So we'll just kind of step through uh, each and every one of them um, right off the bat here. So. Uh, let's just start with the, the strobe uh, switch here um, on the far left. So, you know, first of all, you know, let's take notice of the fact that you've actually got three positions on this light switch. We have an, an off, an auto mode, and an on mode. Um, at my carrier, um, as I imagine, it's probably the, the norm at most other carriers around the world. Um, we never actually use the auto position. It's just either off or on. Uh, and we typically turn uh, the strobes on uh, when we are cleared for takeoff and, um, you know, we'll have them on for the entire duration of the flight. And then when we're clearing the runway after we've landed at our destination, we'll turn them off. And you know, if you kind of think about, you know, these, these strobes, if you left them on when you were taxiing around, um, you know, it's, it's going to be very distracting and actually kind of blinding to the other aircraft that are around you. So that's kind of why we don't use them, you know, when we're on the ground taxiing around unless we're actually on a runway you know, crossing that runway, which, you know, uh, I'll talk just a little bit more about that in a second. But, um, you know, like I said, just very generally used from takeoff to touchdown, you know, think of it that way. And the auto position, if you're curious, um, if you were to leave the switch in that position, the strobes would automatically come on when the airplane uh, gets airborne or the, the struts are not compressed, essentially. 
and they would go off once the, the struts uh, recompress, you know, upon landing again. So just uh, kind of a little, little extra uh, interesting thing there. Uh, the beacon or the anti-collision light, like we said, uh, just an off and an on position here. Uh, the beacon gets turned on right before we start the engines, and it gets turned off uh, as soon as we shut the engines down. So another one of those lights that just stays on for the entire duration of the flight. And, you know, kind of what I had mentioned before, you know, this beacon actually serves as kind of a signaling device to, um, to ground crews, most specifically, uh, about when the engines are running. So the way that they're supposed to be trained is that you're, not, you're never supposed to approach an aircraft or at least, you know, get anywhere near the engines while the beacon is still on because that's, you know, kind of our signal to the outside world once again that we've got engines running and it's not safe to do so. Uh, so it's just, you know, one of those like, you know, day one things that, you know, ground personnel are supposed to be taught. And, you know, it's just, you know, the reason why we use this light in this fashion is like I said, we, we don't turn it on until we're ready to start the engines or, or, you know, turn it off when they've shut down. So... Uh, beacon light stays on through the entire course of, uh, of our flight, like we said. So uh, that is that. Um, the wing light here, or the inspection uh, off and on switch, once again, very simple. Uh, it will come on, you know, of course, you know, if you're, you're intending to take a look out at the wings any, at any, you know, portion of the phase of flight uh, or any, any time during our flight, we think we might have ice accumulation and we just kind of want to check out what's happening on the, you know, the exterior of the airplane. But um, also comes on, you know, as part of our, our regular, um, you know, light usage when we, we take off and we fly up through um, 18,000 feet is the, the point in our manuals where we, we uh, would turn the slide off and then, you know, all the way through the cruise portion of the flight will stay off until we're ready to descend down through 18,000 feet. It comes back on and uh, remains on until we, uh, we clear the runway and we kind of reconfigure the lights for our taxi and operation. Uh, the nav and logo light switch here, it's a three position switch. Uh, we have the off position in the number one and the number two position. So uh, first of all, you know, the, the nav lights are one of those, those items in the airplane that actually stays on the entire time the airplane is powered. So, um, you know, when you very first come out to the airplane, I mean, let's just say it's cold, dark, you know, hadn't had any power during the course of the night, we're firing it up. And let's say, we're, say we're, we're sitting at the gate, you know, just with, you know, gate ground power hooked up. Um, we'll always turn the nav light on whether or not it's day or night. And this just kind of tells, you know, the outside world that there's power on the airplane. So just, you know, for the, the ground crews, it's just like an awareness thing. And it's just kind of like a standard procedure that we use, you know, once again, you know, pretty much worldwide. I, I think this is, you know, kind of the way everybody is operating. But um, like I said, just just there to, to tell people that, hey, there's power on the airplane. Um, and like I said, you know, we touched on it, you know, significantly in the first part of the discussion there, just about, you know, the business about, um, you know, giving other people the orientation of what our airplane is doing if they view us from the outside. Uh, the number one and the number two switches, uh, those actually get changed over on every flight operation. So um, the way we do it at my company is like if it's the, um, the captain's leg, it'll be on the number one side. If it's the first officer's leg, it'll be on, on the number two side. And this just kind of gives... Um, the system a, a chance to kind of use both bulbs evenly. So there's, there's actually two bulbs like out on the wing and, and there's actually two in the tail as well. Um, so it kind of, you know, provides for even wear. But, you know, if, you know, think about once again, you know, big surprise in an airplane, everything's redundant. So, you know, we kind of have two positions there or two lights just in case one burns out. You know, we're not in a situation, you know, most of the time where, we're not going to be recognizable to the outside world once again, you know, about our, our aircraft orientation there. So uh, the nav and the logo lights, that's that's what those guys are all about. Uh, the runway turnoff ones, I, I kind of mentioned it once again in the beginning of the discussion. You know, we just use them um, when we are ready for takeoff. And, uh, you know, we'll leave them on. Um, or actually, I, I should back up and, and say... Uh, these guys down here, uh, the runway turnoff and the nose lights, uh, they do behave a little bit differently. Uh, the, the big point to make there is that, you know, you can have the switches in the on position, but as soon as the nose gear gets retracted, the, the bulbs will actually automatically turn off. So we, it's kind of interesting because we, we have portions of the flight where we're actually like manipulating these switches and we'll, we'll turn them into like the on position. But once again, the, the gear hasn't actually come down in some cases. And therefore, the bulbs are not on, like, you know, when they're up, like, you know, recessed in the gear well there. So it's just kind of a small little interesting thing. But, you know, like I said, coming back, when we turn off lights, you know, we talked about the reason why we're there, just an on and off switch position. Like I said, they come on, we're taken off, and they, you know, come back on, essentially, we're on approach. Um, and let me stop there and tell you, you know, something interesting, too. Um, this isn't necessarily like a... Um, 
I guess like a like a hard you know procedural thing that Airbus prescribes or tells us we need to do, but it's kind of like a technique thing, and it's kind of I've seen this at every airline I've operated at. You know, somebody you know people do like things like similar to this, um, but just when we're on approach, it's kind of like our little reminder as pilots. You know, first of all, when we've been cleared for the approach to the runway and when we've been cleared to land, these are kind of our devices that we can use to just to verify. Um, you know, hey, what is our situation here clearance wise? And, you know, we'll, we'll turn the runway turn off light to the on position. We're cleared for the approach and we'll turn the, uh, the nose um, light, you know, to the full on position there. We're actually cleared to land. So um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Just kind of like a little, you know, a little reminder that, you know, at, at times you, you do get kind of busy, you know, flying an approach and you're like, wait a second, you know, did the, did the tower guy clear us to land or approach controller like clear us to descend on the approach? And like, of course, like if you're ever like, you know, really confused about it, you're going to like query the controller. You're going to, you know, seek you know, like I said, the clarification on what your clearance actually was, but just, you know, most of the time, like, you know, we stick to these procedures and we do things the same way every time. And it's just, you know, it's, it's like clockwork and it, you know, it's just a, a really simple reminder, but it works really well. And uh, it just kind of keeps us all, um, all on the same page, I guess you'd say. So just a little side note I want to mention about that. Uh, the landing lights, these are the ones, once again, that, you know, are underneath the, the wings there and they actually fold out in the Airbus. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that in a second here, but you know, we have a, a retracted position. We have an off position where the, the lights could actually fold out. But we could tell the bulbs that we don't need them on. And then we have the on position here where there's everything is like unfolded essentially. And, you know, lights are on, of course. Um, these lights get used um, when we are uh, taxiing around crossing runways or when we're uh, cleared for takeoff all the way up through um, either 10,000 or 18,000 feet. It's kind of a technique thing. Um, most guys turn them off and on respectively through 10,000. We'll talk about why that is in a second, but, uh, the books actually sit, talk about using them up through 18,000 feet for recognition, uh, two other aircraft. Um, so, uh, landing lights, uh, nose light, uh, next one, uh, three position switch, uh, just an off position, a taxi position and a takeoff position. Um, as you'd imagine the taxi position, just more moving around on the ground and we don't want to you know, uh, blind other people, let's say. And that's, it's kind of interesting if you were to, to look at, you know, the geometry of how this light, you know, shines on the ground. It, it kind of sh shines like down and more like forward of the airplane. Like, so it kind of illuminates like, let's say maybe the, you know, uh, maybe 20 or 30 feet in, ahead of the airplane. When you turn it to the takeoff position, you know, the, the, that beam is actually pointed, you know, a little bit further out, like kind of like way down the runway. And, you know, as you can imagine, you know, when you're, you're taxiing around, you know, you don't want to be blinding other planes that are, you know, maybe taxiing head on in the same taxiway with you. And so it's like, you know, part of the reason why we have this, this two position uh, switch there set up as it is. But uh, like I said, very generally turned on, you know, from when we take off up through 18 and then, you know, coming down, uh, like I said, uh, when we're cleared to land is when we'll turn that guy on and it'll just get you know, manipulated once again to return to the taxi position, like after we've cleared the runway and uh, we're headed to the gate. And um, I guess one more interesting thing to tell you about the, the taxi light, um, when we're approaching the gate, I mean, we, we might use this taxi light all the way to the point to where we're kind of turning in and making that final, uh, you know, straight shot into the, um, to the jetway area there. Uh, we'll always turn this off because like for the, the ground personnel that are like marshalling us in, you know, there's a guy like with the lawns, like outside the airplane, uh, this light will be like shining like right in his eye and it's really hard for him to see the, the painted line on the ground where, you know, he wants you to stop the aircraft. So if you leave this light on, it's kind of funny, you know, 99% of the time, like this is so, you know, instinctive to us, but I mean, occasionally like you might forget to turn it on. You can kind of see the, the ground personnel doing funny things because you're blinding them. And you know, right away, like, oh shoot, you know, we, we forgot to turn the, the taxi light off there. So uh, just kind of one little small uh, extra thing there to, to tell you about. Um, so that kind of wraps up like all the, the buttons there. Um, I guess actually one other thing I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, point out to you guys, is just the, if you take note of like the shape of each of these buttons, um, or, uh, the switches rather, I mean, there are, they are actually shaped a little bit different and that's just so like, you know, if you're reaching up like in a dark cockpit, you can kind of have some like tactile, like feedback about like, oh, wait, which, which switch am I actually grabbing here and intending to manipulate? So it's just kind of like a, just kind of an extra, you know, thing that Airbus is, uh, has incorporated into their design and, you know, it's very simple, but, uh, it works very well. So, uh, at this point, like I said, I just wanted to kind of, you know, throw in just a couple other, um, you know, key data points that I, I, that I could think to mention. Um, you know, when we're 
taxiing around on the ground, um, there's such a, um, like it's such a hazard that, you know, we, we um, you have these situations like around airports that like, you know, as, as alarming as it is, I mean, there's points in time where, you know, there's a lot of traffic like operating on crossing runways and all this kind of stuff. So we are, you know, trained to just be like hyper vigilant. Like when we're crossing a runway, we want to make ourselves like as visible as possible to any other airplanes that are, you know, operating around us, you know, for obvious reasons to like, you know, mitigate the threat of a collision. So it's just, it's standard practice here in the U.S. And, you know, once again, I imagine this is a case, you know, most other places around the world, but, you know, anytime you're crossing an active runway, you'll just turn all lights on, just making yourself as visible as possible. So just kind of one little extra thing. Um, let's see, a, a few other things I could think to talk about. Um, the strobe lights, once again, um, just like, you know, remember when I mentioned that, you know, they can actually be kind of distracting other airplanes on the ground, you know, because of the nature of this, you know, bright flash that might be up close and in somebody's face. There's actually an interesting thing that happens, like when we're flying through the clouds, um, the light actually reflects quite brightly if the, the cloud is just right. And so you can have these situations where like you'll actually kind of get, you know, a little bit blinded inside the flight deck if the, the you're in a thick cloud and, you know, the strobes are going off and you're kind of, you know, you're, you're trying to keep your eyes acclimated to like, you know, the, the night vision, let's say, if it's a nighttime condition. So there's actually like some rare circumstances where you, you might be in a cloud and you're getting yourself blinded and you might just, you know, turn the strobe lights off for a, um, a short period of time just to keep yourself from, keep your eyes from getting, you know, unacclimated, let's say, or kind of uh, shocked by the, the bright lighting there. Um, one other really small thing uh, on the Airbus, uh, some of the newer models, they have on the... Um, on the nav light positions there, there's actually this little like blue LED that's kind of uh, very close and proximate to where those nav lights are. It's just, it's actually, if you see this or notice it or wonder what it is, it's it's actually a wear indicator that um, tells like somebody doing a walk around or a mechanic that's inspecting, you know, the outside of the, the wing area there that the light is um, almost about to like burn out. You know, I'm not sure exactly what time interval or like how they've defined this, you know, this LED light to get triggered to go off, but it's just like, it's just there to serve um, the purpose, like I said, of just alerting somebody in the outside of the airplane that nav light is getting close to um, maybe needing to be replaced. So if you're wondering about that little blue light, uh, that is what it is. So, all right, a lot of data there. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Let's let's talk about just a few other things. Um, one thing I wanted to, to show you guys. I took a, a close up shot of it the other day when I was on a walk around, but. You know, I, I just want to show you up close and personal, like what this stuff looks like. So we're we're obviously looking at the nose gear here, and I'm standing in front of the airplane, and we're just looking directly aft. And you know, this this uh, portion of the um, you know the nose landing gear here, it has the uh, the taxi and the takeoff nose lights here that we talked about, and then it has these runway turn off lights here. And I won't recap and you know tell you you know everything I just told you already you know already at this point. But I just I wanted to give you kind of a, a close up and just kind of you know, show you what they are, what they look like. And um, yeah, I mean, looking, you know, just without any knowledge and looking at this, this, you know, thing that you're like, wow, there's four lights there, you know, what exactly do those things do? So like we said, uh, you know, the runway turnoff lights, and then we have the the taxi light, which is a little bit smaller, and it's kind of angled down a little bit, like we said, and then we have the takeoff light, which is, you know, obviously bigger, it's brighter, casts more illumination, and it kind of aims down the, down the runway um, as we're looking out the window there, so... Uh, just a little extra uh, stuff I wanted to show you guys. Um, and, uh, oh, yes, the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, just the, the interesting thing about the Airbus, um, you know, at least the, the 320, you know, series, uh, you know, 1918, 21, all this kind of stuff. Um, the These landing lights are actually situated underneath the wing. Uh, so that's where we're looking here, you know, kind of like the, you know, underneath the airplane on the left side of the, in this case. Um, and you can see here, this, this light is just designed to kind of fold up into the wing so that, you know, it, it reduces drag, of course, you know, when you're not using it. Um, I'm not sure why Airbus uh, chose to design it this way. Um, a lot of other, you know, airplanes have them kind of like planted like into the wing root itself, or they kind of have them planted like into the belly, and there's just like a plastic fairing that covers them. So they're always just kind of, you know, situated to stay there in place. And of course, like, you know, the Airbus wing has like a portion of the slat that goes like pretty far out, you know, there's, there's probably engineering reasons about why they chose to do this, but um, it's just interesting, you know, next time you're riding on an Airbus, um, if you pay close attention, um, like I said, either around 18,000 feet or 10,000 feet, um, you know, 
you'll hear this extra kind of little rumble or vibration or noise being made. And that's actually the landing light, you know, coming out into the wind stream. And it does create, you know, a fair amount of resistance. So you can just kind of, you can feel it. And like I said, you know, to, to kind of circle back, I, I mentioned it briefly in the beginning of the discussion. Um, you know, in the books, it says, you know, you'll use these lights um, up through 18,000 feet. And, you know, once again, we were coming down through 18,000 feet. But the way they've rewritten the manuals, I, I think probably across the board, but at least at my carrier right now, is it's kind of up to like, you know, the, the pilot's discretion, you know, whether or not you want to use them between 18 and 10,000 feet. And it's just for like a noise and a passenger comfort, you know, type of thing. So um, it's just like, you know, you can choose to, you know, use whatever t technique you want, you know, when you're actually flying the thing. But um, it's just kind of, uh, yeah, just like, like I said, interesting thing, just the fact that it folds up at all, um, the reason why they designed that. Um, is kind of unique. Uh, some other airplanes, you know, have, have similar systems uh, to this, but um, yeah, this is how it is in the Airbus. So, uh, All right, um, that pretty much wraps up the main portion of the, the lights discussion I want to have today, and uh, we are going to wrap it up with the, the Q&A once again, so I'll pull up uh, today's question uh, once again uh, from Abby Thomas. Thank you again uh, for uh, all your questions. <laughs> you're, you're really... Uh, uh, helping me uh, keep this uh, exciting for everybody. So uh, keep writing in. I appreciate you doing so. And for all the rest of you out there, uh, I encourage you to, to throw questions out if you got them. But um, Abby had a couple questions that related to one of the last talks that we did. So um, first off, he wanted to know, um, where is the safety valve located on the A320? And if you missed a discussion, you can go back and watch the, the uh, presentation on the uh, pressurization system we did. But you know, these safety valves, if you missed that talk, once again, it, it, it serves just as the name implies as a safety mechanism to relieve pressure um, if there is some malfunction with other parts of the pressurization system. So like before it allows the airplane to, you know, crack potentially or, you know, become uh, so overpressured that, you know, structural, you know, damages start to happen. These safety valves are meant to give way. And I found a couple really interesting shots that, that kind of show these, these valves um, kind of close up. I mean, this is this is an interesting one. This must be from an aircraft boneyard or something somewhere where obviously they've disassembled an old airplane, but you can kind of get a real good look here. Um, what we're looking at, this is the aft pressure bulkhead. So, you know, when they manufacture airplanes, you know, first of all, they actually, they make this very strong like cap that kind of sits on the end of it because, you know, just from a structural standpoint, having this kind of bowl shaped curve just can withhold like a lot more pressure than, you know, if the um, you know, the, the shape of the tail with that kind of cone situation was just kind of allowed to, you know, hold all that pressure back. It's just not as strong. So the, they design these planes in, in this manner, uh, first of all, so you can kind of get an idea what that pressure bulk, bulkhead, like I said, looks like on the, on the back end of the airplane. But the, the safety valves that we're talking about are these two guys right here. And, you know, to build on our discussion even further, when I showed you guys the slide of the pressurization system, there was an indication in the cockpit for the, um, the safety valve, and there, there's actually two of them back there, so we're kind of digging a little bit deeper now. There is a safety valve for not only the positive pressure release, and you know that's you know the one like I said that's that's indicated on the screen there, but there's actually another safety valve that's there for like negative pressure release, and um, you know just you know to I guess you know draw these two scenarios apart, you know the the positive pressure relief valve is there for the, the type of instance where if we like overpressurize the airplane and we need to exhaust out, you know, this, this air pressure that would normally go out the outflow valve, you know, that is what the, the positive safety pressure release valve would be for. But there's actually a negative one there uh, for if for some reason you ha actually had suction through the aircraft cabin. And this would, the reason that this would probably happen is be something like a rapid decompression. You know, if you had a, you know, some something, you know, while the airplane was, you know, flying around, you know, uh, a portion of the fuselage gave way for whatever reason. Um, you know, all that pressure is released very quickly and there's this kind of suction and like negative pressure essentially that's created in that instance. The negative pressure relief valve allows for some relief in the opposite direction. So it, you know, kind of allows the pressure to, to normalize, but that's, you know, like I said, digging deeper. Uh, so we actually have two safety valves back there. And um, a little bit closer uh, view of these valves here can be seen. Um, in this slide here, uh, the the bigger one or the the one on the left here is the positive uh, pressure relief uh, valve, and the, the smaller one here is the negative one. So just uh, you can kind of get, like I said, a little bit closer uh, view of what these things actually look like inside the airplane. And you know, 
I think I mentioned it a moment ago, but these are just like spring-loaded valves, essentially, that are meant to kind of give way at a certain predetermined pressure point. So um, they're very simple, uh, but that's how they work. That's what they look like, and uh, I hope that makes sense to you, Abby. Uh, and he, uh, one more question he had uh, had to do with um, also, I believe it was the same discussion. We were talking about the ditching push-button switch. If you didn't catch that one, go back and watch it, and you'll kind of catch up on what we're talking about here. But um, he had the question of if the landing gear is down when you push the ditching put push button, what happens to it? Um, and it's a good question. I can kind of see like where your thought track was at. Um, you would think that the landing gear being down would actually open, you know, up, you know, area underneath the wing that would allow, you know, water potentially like we were talking about the ditching scenario to kind of enter, um, you know, the enter the aircraft and make it less floatable, let's say, but it's actually completely sealed under there. So there's not... There's not necessarily like the, the same, um, you know, threat, I guess you'd say, or like, you know, reason potentially to have like the gear uh, in the up position to prevent flotation. Um, so to the direct answer to your question, Abby, is like nothing will happen to the gear. It'll just stay exactly where it's at. But um, to kind of build a step further on top of that, um, it's actually in the manuals. You know, they, they tell you if you do have to ditch an aircraft in the water, you actually don't want the gear to be out at all. So like theoretically you wouldn't have dropped the gear at all if you were kind of prepared for this ditching and water landing. And, you know, kind of the reason, you know, for that um, mentality is just, you know, if you had the landing gear down, you know, um, th there is this potential that the, as the airplane kind of came down and was, you know, landing on top of the water, the gear could actually catch and it could make the whole plane, you know, kind of go end over end. So it's just there, you know, the, the reason why that procedure is written the way it is and we wouldn't have the gear down is just, you know, to, give the airplane the best chance of just coming to rest, you know, upright, you know, in a normal attitude, so to speak. So, uh, like I said, if we're ever in a ditching scenario, like we wouldn't have the gear down, uh, theoretically. Um, so hopefully, uh, that all makes sense. So, um, once again, guys, uh, if you like what you're uh, hearing and seeing here, just hit the like button, hit subscribe, just kind of helps the YouTube algorithm, I guess, and kind of helps more people find me and uh, kind of continues to propel the channel forward and uh, keep this fun and exciting for everybody and, and uh, <laughs> continues to give me more stuff to talk about as well. So um, like I said, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.